Hello everyone, are you going to Gen Con 2024? Well, I've got some games that I think you should be checking out. Let's jump into the list. Arcane Wonders is going to be showing off for the very first time Foundations of Metropolis. This is effectively a cardboard, not really budget version, but a normal version of Foundations of Rome. As you can see, you're still going to be building things, but they are cardboard, so you're using that for the tile placement rather than chunky big buildings that come in Foundations of Rome. It's got the Metropolis style theming, which I'm not quite as keen on, but it's definitely one you should be checking out at the event. Not much is really known about how Everdell Duo works, but well, I've been really impressed with how sort of games companies have been taking full on games and been making the jewels, the duets, etc. I'm thinking like Splendor Jewel, Seven Wonders Jewel, and this one, Everdale Duo, is another one in that line. We can see a little bit on the back of the box here, and there's not much else that we know. It looks like a small, well, faster version, because it only says 30 minutes on the box for two people, or even one to two people. But this is going to be like your first opportunity to go and see what the game is all about. So that's where I'd be going to give this one a demo or at least a look. From Envy Born Games comes Confusing Lands. And this is a really very fast place two player game. So like 10 minutes it says on the box here. And let's have a look through. You are basically putting down these and I think quite nice, weird illustrations. It's got quite a, a distinct art style, but also it's very sort of obvious what the different things are and you're placing them down, trying to do them in specific patterns and combinations. And tr you're basically doing that to score points. And you can see here, you're sort of using it and overlaying the cards uh, to try and get these sort of scoring things to trigger. There's been a few games where you've been overlaying cards and building out territories of different types of stuff. This looks like a solid one, and I, I really like the visual presentation, and that's what's drawn me to confusing lands. An absolute smash hit of a video game, and well, despite my early reservations, it sounds like the board game version of Slay the Spire, well, is actually pretty good. I've not played it myself, and definitely would be trying to get a demo of this in at Gen Con if I was attending. And I think if this is the one where you've been on the fence, this is going to be a great time for you to try out this deck building game. Now, there's some great pictures from people here. All the pictures in this video are from Board Game Geek. But look, it's giving you the same awesome choices that you got at the start of the video game. It looks like they've captured all of the great aspects of the video game. Like, look here, we've got the many different mob types. We've got different types of cards. We've got that map that you're working your way along in one way or another. Slay the Spire is a fantastic deck building game digitally in terms of the sort of original video game and everyone's saying this is good so I think it would be worth a play. Coming from Charming Game Collective is this really interestingly quirky looking game called Park Life of which there's two versions. You've got the Hedgehog version and you've got Park Life People version. As far as I can tell, these two games play exactly the same, but the theming just sort of differs. Although there may be some subtle differences between the two that I'm not aware of. This is a trick-taking game with some stunning looking artwork, regardless of which version you go for. Another one where there are two versions, this time it's Cascadia, sort of the new rolling system. So Cascadia Rolling Rivers and Cascadia Rolling Hills. Now they play very much the same though come with unique cards in each different scoring mechanisms and stuff i absolutely adore the sort of original cascadia i think it's a fantastic sort of dual layer um, tile placement game where not only are you worrying about making these big terrain areas you're also worrying about what you're putting on top in terms of those scoring animals it looks like it is capturing sort of the uh what you want of lots of scorings and things triggering and terrain bonuses and all that sort of goodness and the animal scorings from the original and well this looks like it's 
going to be an absolutely solid game. I definitely want to get hands on with this and I'd probably leave Gen Con with a copy. Maybe even a copy of both Rolling Rivers and Rolling Hills. Life in Ratera is a really interesting one. Why? Because the people who have made it. One of the designers is Eric Lang, known for really big games and Simon, like call many or not products. That guy. And now this is a relatively simple game in conjunction and published by Hasbro. Yes, this is like mass market meets hobby board gaming. And it looks like it's got some really cool aspects to it. Again, a bit like some of the other games I've talked about. It's got a number of scoring opportunities from the looks of it. Those cards at the top here. You're placing these things down onto your own sort of player board. Uh, so these sort of pieces. Now, they do look quite thin. And I think that's where the Hasbro element is coming in. But this could mean we're starting to see like polyomino placement games becoming mainstream. One thing about me, if you've not watched the channel before, is I love two-player games, and I love small two-player games, and, well, Flip Circus looks like one of those. It's a two-player game that plays in around 10 minutes. It says 15 on the box, but from the sound of things, it does get quicker as you play, and you're effectively flipping over these, um, these different acrobats or different people around this sort of ring to trigger their abilities. I don't know much more than that. There is not much more information than that. But it's the sort of thing where a 10 minute game for two players, very small limited components, that's the sort of thing that gets me excited and wanting to know more. I mean, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't give much away, but I definitely would want to play this one. I'll be picking this up when it becomes available. One for lighter gamers out there, well, we've already had Cascadia basically roll and write, and well, now Park, so an already family weight sort of game, is now a roll and write, or in this case, Park's Roll and Hike. Well, I kind of like that they've not just gone for roll and write, they've put a twang on that, but that's kind of what it is. You're going to be rolling the dice, you're going to be checking off and crossing off different things, trying to of set collect it looks like you're as in you're trying to in this case get some fish some turtles some bears you're trying to get as many of them as possible it just looks nice and pleasant um a light roll and write well there's a lot of them out there but parks was solid so i'd want to give parks roll and hike a go i've actually been very fortunate to have already played rebirth i got a very short taste of the game at UK Games Expo. Now, while my experience wasn't 100% the best because we were really cut for time, like they basically told us after only a few turns, right, your time's up, we've got to get more people on, I do think coming back to it that I think a lot more of the game would evolve and be very interesting as the game goes on. And I mean, it absolutely looks stunning and it's from Reiner Knizia. I think it's going to be a good hit when it does come out and I do want to actually properly play Rebirth, not just um, have like a 10 minute attempt at it. I think this would be really good if you can demo it properly at the event. Seaside was a surprise hit for me at UK Games Expo and why? Well, it sort of was super quick and easy. These different tokens at the bottom, you do have to learn what they what they do at the start. So, for instance, um, certain ones can be turned over. When you take certain things, like you take so many rocks, it triggers and you can take all of the crabs from the middle and different things like that. Once you've learned they are about six or seven different triggering actions, you are playing. And it's got one of the neatest sort of end game calculations of points you'll ever see. Every single one of these wooden discs is worth one. You are going to stack them up and whoever has the tallest pile at the end of the game from playing rocks to collect crabs or trying to get a bird to take all of the beetles from the middle or activating a power by flipping a wave over to do something else. Whatever, however you've got all of these things, you stack all of your tokens up and whoever has the biggest pile at the end wins. It's a really quick one and uh, I just, I really enjoyed this one at UK Games Expo. 
I can't mention Gen Con 2024 and not talk about the fact that Comic Hunters is actually going to be there. This is an insanely sought after game and now it's actually going to be coming out at least in the US. I do hope it comes out properly over here in Europe as well, but you are collecting uh, comics. You're a comic hunter, you're trying to collect them, they do, I believe it's basically like set collection-y sort of stuff. It's very much, very much wanted by many people. It cost hunt like a hundred pounds to import it from Brazil, and many people did that. It's going to be much more affordable and available in the US, and that's starting at Gen Con. So why don't you go and check out Comic Hunters? I'm on a massive Star Wars hype right now with Star Wars Unlimited, which I'm sure is going to be at Gen Con. In fact, I know it will be because there's going to be um, special convention cards available. But I'm not going to talk about that one on this list. This one is Star Wars The Mandalorian Adventures. It seems to take what a few games have done previously in terms of a folded book where you're opening it to a certain page and that is like your mission alongside cards, tokens, etc. that add the fun. So you're basically playing through like this book. There's sort of story bits to it and it sounds really cool and you've got some great characters. This is one that I think, if it does well, this has got, obviously, Mandalorian, uh, IG-11, and others. Here's the mission book, for instance. I could see this. If this goes well, we're going to see a lot of Star Wars, insert name here, adventures. And, well, if it's good, I don't see a problem with that either. The penultimate pick on the list is Kelp. This absolutely stunning box art is, well, from the sound of things, matched by some pretty awesome game design. In fact, I actually was really lucky to speak to the designer and I'll link the interview that I did with them on the channel. So that'll be linked somewhere. But this game is asymmetrical. One player is the octopus, one player is the shark. And, well, they're not best friends. The octopus is trying to hide, manoeuvre and stay smuggled away while the shark is trying to find them. A really interesting one with some very gorgeous looking components and beautiful, beautiful artwork. I love the vivid sort of difference, the striking difference between the, the bluey greens and the red octopus. I think that just makes it really pop. I think the artwork has drawn a lot of people in, but it sounds like a cool two player game. Another cool two player game. And again, I've got to interview the designer actually a couple of times on the channel, so go and check that out and even check Kelp out at Gen Con. And last but not least is a fun one that I saw at UK Games Expo, Nekojima. Now this is a dexterity game where you <laughs> are trying not to make everything fall down, but all of them have different length of wires, different colours, and you're actually trying to balance these cats on there as well. So you can just about see here, if I zoom in, you can see these black bits here. They are cats that are hanging, actually hanging on the uh, the wires. So a lot of fun. It's just super quick dexterity, goodness, good fun one to maybe play at the end of a day when your brain's a bit noggled from playing everything else. Anyway, that wraps up this list of what you should be checking out at Gen Con 2024. I wish I was going because there's some absolute bangers on this list. And while there's many, many more games, there's like 500 easily games that you could go and play at the event. Like I mentioned, Star Wars Unlimited is going to be there and many, many other games as well that I just couldn't include on this list. Let me know in the comment section below what you want to be checking out at the event. What other conventions should I cover like this? And, well, until next time, have a fantastic day gaming.